Good Tuesday evening, everyone. This is Don. We are back for another exciting episode of Game Rama Uncut. And today we have a very special treat for you. We are actually going to be playing the Lost Prototype for South Park for the Game Boy Color. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a big story behind this, uh, prototype. Uh, so I guess without further ado, I'm going to present everything I can. So this prototype was produced back in 1998. And it was actually supposed to be uh, tied in with uh, the N64 and PlayStation, uh, and I guess PC to an extent, uh, releases of the original South Park game uh, back in yeah back in ninety eight ninety nine. So so um so this game was supposed to come out along with those uh, with those glorious titles, which trust me will at least cover South Park sixty four sometime in the future. Um, but what ended up happening was, uh, it was about, I think, 70% of the way through, and, um, Trey Parker and Matt Stone literally went to Acclaim and said, you, you can't release this, <laughs> and Acclaim was like, why, and they're like, well, let's see, um, the Game Boy Color we would see as a, uh, children's console, <laughs> it's a children's handheld, and uh, it would be kind of awkward for a child to walk into a Walmart and say, Mommy, Mommy, I want to get South Park for the Game Boy Color. <laughs> and Acclaim just went, oh. <laughs> and that's when they were like, you know, actually they might have a point on this one. The N64 we could fly by with because there were mature games for the N64, like Turok and all that. In fact, the original South Park game, we'll dig more into this when we actually get to that one. Um, was built on that engine, but <laughs> in the case of this one, they were like, "Yeah, we can't, we just can't. <laughs> like, there's no, we have no viable excuse for this." So that was pretty much that. And this game, <clears throat> essentially, I think, got lost for the next like twenty, twenty or so years. Like, I think it was just recently uncovered. Like, maybe in the last, like, two or three years. So. Uh, I found out about this game through, uh, Guru Larry, surprisingly enough, uh, Fact Hunt. And I was like, oh, I didn't know they made a South Park game for the Game Boy Color. Now I want to check this out. And, uh, this game, I think, from what I remember at least watching, was about eight levels in length. And I think the, uh, total play time is, like, two and a half hours, but... I'll be honest with you, I don't think we're going to cover all of it. I think we'll at least get a good chunk. And so this is the game. <laughs> this is South Park for the Game Boy Color. The game Trey Parker and Matt Stone didn't want you to play. <laughs> so, uh, and I do apologize for the audio not syncing up with the video. I don't know why that's an issue. Um, it's more or less an emulator problem, not my computer. So... And trust me, emulation on this was a pain in the ass. Not with the game itself, more or less with trying to get a controller to work. Um, I, I ended up, I tried like three different versions of Virtual Boy 64 to get this game to work. And uh, <laughs> absolutely nothing to work. I would get one version where it would be like, Oh yes, we can, we can record video. Great, wonderful. Now can you connect my controller to your emulator? Um, and systems like what controller? <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that's uh, that's lovely. <laughs> so that's one version. Another version was like, oh yeah, we can absolutely connect your controller. All right, cool. Can I record the gameplay footage? What's recording? Oh, you son of a bitch! <laughs> and then um, another version was like, oh yeah, we can do recording. Can you ca can you capture my uh, my controller? Oh, absolutely. Okay. What seems to be the issue? Oh, we can only record this in ABI chunks, similar to uh, what the uh, SNES um, emulator could do for uh, Peach's Adventure. And I'm just like, oh, that's wonderful. So, so yeah, so that's uh, that was pretty much that. Uh, <laughs> God, it is so much fun uh, looking at this. All right, so maybe Stan, you know, pick up Cartman and toss him. Surprised we could throw this lard ass. <laughs> Trying to get as close as we can to throw the rat and let it go. Yes. And we got the Wendy statue. Wonderful. 
We've also gotten the Mr. Hat statue, and there's Ike and the South Park uh, emblem. Perfect. And we captured Kenny. <laughs> but we didn't capture Kenny, we saved Kenny. So this, that's the whole point of this game, is that it's, it's pretty much a loose adaptation of what the N64 game was. <clears throat> with the added benefit of, it's a puzzle game. So you're essentially playing like a platforming puzzle game, and um, your main goal is to try to flip some switches to save, uh, to eventually like free Kenny from these cages. <clears throat> and you can switch between, as you can see, uh, Stan, Kyle, and Cartman. And each of them have their own abilities. <laughs> Lo and behold, I've come to discover. Um, Stan's the only one that can activate switches for some reason. Cartman, uh, Cartman's big enough that Stan can throw him and use him as a boulder. Or not a boulder, but like a ball. But he's also big enough that you can use him as a platform. And Kyle is the only one who can jump higher. So essentially, Kyle's Luigi in this sense. But... In another weird twist of fate, Kyle is also the one that you could bounce off of. Like, where Cartman, like, you could stand on him and use him as, like, a platform. Kyle, you could bounce off him to get, like, an extra boost pad. I, I would make a joke, but I don't want to. <laughs> it would be too obvious as a South Park joke. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like, see, like, you can use Cartman as an extra, like, boost. Not, like, a, like a bounce boost, but more like a, oh, we need some, like, extra platforming. And... You can also carry the characters around, so. so. like, there's Mr. Hat, so I'm gonna try to block the UFOs from coming, and then, god damn it. Yeah, and that's another thing, too. If you fall from too great of a height, like, A, it'll kill you, but B, it depends on where you fall, because sometimes it'll kill you, other times it'll just, like, stun you for a little bit. So. Um... But I guess I should talk about the aftermath, at least with this game, uh, what happened to it. So after Trey Matt essentially rejected this game, uh, <laughs> Acclaim was like, well, shit, we put in the time and effort to make this, we can't really, you know, just abandon it. So they ended up, uh, they ended up going in and they essentially re, um, they redid all the, uh, pixel art. So they essentially swapped out, uh, sprites and made a completely different game. And, yep, there we go. Like, See, like that, like, Kyle can jump high. And then, yeah, you can use Kyle as a bouncing pad to get Stan up to the top. And then you gotta get, you, know, you can get Carmen down there. And then bring Kyle back up on the platform. Get Stan down to the switch. And there we go, you can just... I also like the little idle animation. Anyway, I'm sorry, I'm getting really sidetracked here. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so... So, um, but you can essentially, uh, so what essentially happened is, that essentially Acclaim was like, well, we built the engine already. Uh, the most we can do at this point is just switch out sprites. And that's essentially what they ended up doing. They swapped out sprites continuously for, like, the next, uh, three or so years. It's similar to, like, how WayForward, um, did certain games during, like, the late 90s, early 2000s, where it was more or less, God damn it. Where it was more or less, um, building off of the same engine, but just doing different gameplay. Um, gameplay in, uh, sprites. Like, um, I jokingly brought this up. Uh, the game, uh, the game engine for, uh, Sabrina, for the Game Boy Color, was essentially built on, uh, the sim same engine that, uh, a game like Extreme Sports was also built off of. Similar enough, also, to the same engine that would also be used for, um, Shantae. That's why that episode has the jokingly, uh, clever title of, of, um, Sabrina the Half, the Teenage Half Genie, uh, or the Half Genie Teenage Witch. That's a long title, I can't remember most of it. But, like, that's the reason that that, that title exists. Is because it, that joke makes sense if you know, you know, <laughs> the inner workings of, uh, you know, game development. So, anywho, but yeah, so, like, they essentially claim just went in and were like, alright, we can still use the engine, but we just can't use South Park. So, they ended up doing, I think they did, like, two, yeah, two separate games, uh, based on the same engine. They did one, 
I think for Europe and Latin America, which was based on Maya the Bee, which was an old, uh, an old, old property from like the 70s. They were able to get like super cheap shit. Hey, <laughs> guy, I'm gonna have. And then, um, I think for America they did, um, Mary Kate and Ashley. And that version of the game became such a success that Acclaim was like, alright, let's go back in, let's fix the engine. <laughs> in case, you know, there was any bugs that we didn't fix. And, uh, they released a second game, which was essentially the, a fixed version. Um, <laughs> but that's, that's pretty much it. That's all, the, like, this game engine got used for was, like, those three games. Uh, the two Mary Kate and Ashleys, and then the uh, the one um, Maya the Bee game, and I, I think there was also like sprites. Shit, um, I think there was also sprites. I guess within some of the code for I think Mary Kate and Ashley, or was it Maya the Bee? One of the two uh, that like had uh, itchy and scratchy in it. So they they were also planning to do like a Simpsons spinoff game at some point, which would have been interesting because I. I think if I remember correctly, Acclaim still had the license to do The Simpsons at that point. They hadn't gone back over to Fox. So. <sighs> Damien. <laughs> Satan's son that we never see again after like season three. <laughs> Talk about an obscure character. A character we have only seen like a handful of goddammit times. <laughs> I guess, actually, I guess I could talk about my, uh, my, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? My feelings on, uh, South Park. Um, something I'll probably talk about again and again and again when we ever get around to covering the other South Park games, but I like South Park. I, I love South Park. It's one of my favorite, uh, shows of all time. It's, it's not like number one, uh, clearly people who know me know what my number one favorite show is. It's obviously The Simpsons. But I would put South Park maybe about number two, number two or number three. I know, like, it's not everyone's cup of tea. Not that many people like South Park. They think it's crude. They think it's maybe, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, too up its own ass sometimes in terms of ideology. But I, I, I like the show. It, I, I just, I like the show. I find it funny. There are some, you know, episodes that I've grown at. There are some episodes that I really like. Like, my, hands down, my favorite season of South Park is season six. And it's funny, because, like, Kenny's one of my favorite characters, but my favorite season of South Park is the one season he's not in. <laughs> um, I don't know how to fucking, I know I have to get snowballs. Like, how the hell do I get snowballs? Like, seriously, do I have to have Damien hit me, or? Well, actually, no, I shouldn't be thinking that. Why should I be thinking that he has to hit me? But, like, do I have to, like, hit the... Snowballs he's, like, throwing? Is that... I have no idea. Anyway. <clears throat> well, like, no, like... You know, I... Like I've said, I get it. You know, not everyone likes the humor. Not everyone likes the ideology the show presents. I think I remember one of my favorite YouTubers uh, called it... Uh, essentially, a show for conservatives. And, and, yeah, I think that's the one point where I was like, Alright, maybe I don't fully agree with this content creator, but, like, I agree with a lot of her other points, but not this one. <laughs> um, like, it, it's, it's a show for people who just, like, don't like to get bullshit around. It's a, it's a show, I guess the word I'm looking for is, it's a show that's essentially made for people who kind of just sense there's... I, I, I don't know, I have nothing for it. I, I like the show because it's funny to me. Like, it was one of those things, like, I grew up watching, I was like... Oh, this is funny. And then, like, as I got older, like, oh, yeah, this is still funny to me. I let the time expire and nothing happened. <laughs> I just lost the life. <laughs> <clears throat> but, I don't care many of these tea poops. <laughs> um, like I said, I like the sprite shit on this sometimes. Okay, I can't jump on Stan, but Stan can jump on me. Like, that's the one downside to Cartman is, like, I can't jump on Stan, but Stan could jump on me. Kyle could jump on me, and I could jump on Kyle. And ski, I can get him. Um, <coughs> but anyway, like that, I I guess that's all I'm gonna say on it. It's like I just I find it funny. Like yeah, are there some episodes that are just poorly dated now? Yes. <laughs> 
even Dre and Matt have come out and said, like, yeah, we've done some episodes we're not proud of anymore. <laughs> like, the whole fucking, um, uh, two-part, like, Time to Get Serial episode back in, like, season 22. That was them saying, like, ah, uh, yeah, we're sorry for Al Gore. <laughs> Uh, the Al Gore shit we now feel bad for. <clears throat> and, um... I know they've been trying to do a lot more shit. Uh, episodes, like, trying to just address, like... Yeah, we thought this was funny back then, but now looking at it, it's, it's not as funny. <laughs> so. Anyway. And, like, hands down, my favorite episode still is, uh... Fuck. <laughs> my favorite episode is fuck. Nice. <laughs> um, now my favorite shit. <coughs> God damn it. Okay, my favorite episode of season six, or not season six. My favorite episode overall is a season six episode. It's um, it's uh, The Simpsons already did. It. It's one of my favorite. I've, I've talked about it a few times, but it's one of my favorite episodes. Um, it's my favorite because it's just. The whole point of the episode is essentially Trey and Matt expressing their frustration for every fucking idea they've ever come up with and having someone in the writer's room go, oh, The Simpsons already did it. <laughs> That's the whole point of the episode, is it's just Trey and Matt's frustration with the writer's room. <laughs> ah, oh my god, I gotta use Kyle, okay. So, I gotta hit the snowballs with Kyle, and then run his stand, I guess, to grab the... <clears throat> to grab the, uh, shit. Or, actually, that's good, because... And then, yeah. With stand, get the, uh... Fuck! Get the snowballs. And then I gotta find a way to jump all the way up to the top and hit Damien with the snowballs. Alright, that makes sense. <laughs> I get it now. So, <laughs> that makes it a hell of a lot easier. But yeah, like, hands down, that's my favorite episode of all time. Because Simpsons already did. Not only is like a Simpsons fan, but as a South Park fan, it's funny. <laughs> and it, it's also funny, too, because the, the Simpsons crew and the South Park crew are really, like, close. Because <laughs> the Simpsons crew is a fan of South Park, and the South Park crew is a fan of the Simpsons, so they take jabs at each other constantly. I, I guess I could say like I've been watching the new episodes that have been coming out. Uh, at the time I'm recording this, season 25 is still just started. I think there are three. I think it's three episodes in, three or four. Because I think I'm trying to remember here. It's uh, first episode of the season was Pajama Day, and then it was um, it was oh uh. It was, um, what the, oh, the big fix, and then, yeah, so we're about four episodes in. So it was, uh, Jam Day, the big fix, god damn it, um, City People, and, uh, the new episode, which is gonna come out, uh, tomorrow night, shit, um, is called Back to the Cold War, which, <laughs> already, I'm like, oh, that's great, they're doing a Back to the Future title parody, wonderful, we finally got to that point in South Park, people, <laughs> Trey and Matt are doing Back to the Future, <laughs> alright, alright, so I'm thinking here, leave Kyle in the bottom, Stan go up, and I just gotta find a way to hit Damien, I can't, because if I toss it, yeah, it's too low, so I wonder if Cartman can help me with this. I just have Cartman there, and then yeah, that makes sense. I have Cartman there, and then have Stan. <laughs> okay, uh, don't don't think about it. God damn it, mate! <laughs> My thumbs. Why do you do this to me? Ugh. But, um, but yeah, like, that, that's, that's where I've been caught up so far, is that the new episode comes out Wednesday, which, which is at 8 now, which I find surprising, I'm like, really? <laughs> self perk on at 8 o'clock, because I'm so used to the 10.30, uh, shit, I gotta, like, learn to avoid that. We're gonna do this again. <laughs> um, because I'm so used to self perk being on the, uh, the, uh, 10.30 slot. 
And so it's like, it's so weird, like, you're like, South Park, now on at 8 o'clock, like, wait. <laughs> like, South Park's usually kind of at 10.30 at night, like, it's usually, like, the last show before, um, like, Daily Show goes on. Or usually at least there's one show between South Park and The Daily Show. It's like, those are the two essential, like, Comedy Central shows of the last, like, 30 years. <laughs> Has been, uh, The Daily Show and then, like, South Park. Did I say 30? I meant, like, 25. <laughs> Actually, now that I think about it, I think Daily Show is celebrating its 25th this year. Or, no, that would have been last year. No, I think Daily Show celebrated its 25th last year. Because I think Daily Show came out in 96? Yeah, South Park's 97, so Daily Show was 96. And for a while, South Park was, like, Amongst, I think, like, two other primetime animated comedies on Comedy Central, which were, like, um, Dr. Katz, which I also liked, and that backfired, oh, that actually worked, I was about to say, that backfired, <laughs> um, Dr. Katz, which I think, by the time South Park came on, I think it was on its last season, I think the show only ran for, like, four seasons, I think it was on its last, by the time South Park came on, or, or it was nearing its last season. And that that show um, it's, it's another great show. I highly recommend it. Um, but it was that show, and then I think the other one was Bob and Margaret, which was a Canadian animated comedy. Which I really think about it out loud. It's like wow, so uh, Comedy Central really had a fucking Canadian animated comedy. <laughs> I gotta go back up here. The only one's gonna try to sneak through. Fuck y'all. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like those were like the three big... Those were the three animated shows at that time. It was South Park, Dr. Katz, and... Uh, and um, Bob and Margaret. Wow, I can't believe I almost blinked on that. But then, um, like, South Park became a hit. And then a few years later, they did... Um, Comedy Central worked on a few animated shows. There's stuff like Moonbeam City and um, Ugly Americans. Uh, Drawn Together, obviously, was one of the bigger ones. Um, Brickleberry. I'm, I'm trying to like. I'm trying to think of the other ones. Crank Yankers, which not really. I don't know if I would technically count that as an animated series because that was more of a puppet show. So it'd be something more in the vein of like um, something more in the vein of. Um, the Muppets, I guess, in a way. So, like, those are most of the shows I could probably remember. And they got a new one on now, which follows South Park, called Fairview. It's by uh, Stephen Colbert's uh, team. It's... I, I don't like it. <laughs> it's it's not one of my favorites, and I think it's because... God damn it. Uh, now there's ten seconds left. Who cares? I think it's just because it... It's just, it's done... I, I, I think I just don't like the designs. I think the show would be fine if it weren't for the fucking designs. <laughs> uh, anyway. Psh, I only got that out of the way. Alright, back to this shit show again. <laughs> I still can't believe if Trey and Matt were like, no. <laughs> we ain't gonna give them this one. <laughs> N64, fine. <laughs> but this one, eh, no. <laughs> You know what the funny thing is? Trey and Matt fucking regret the N64 game. <laughs> they go on our record several times saying, like, yeah, we we really didn't like that one. <laughs> like, the N64 game, we d it wasn't our favorite. There we go. Got Ike. Okay, now I gotta... <sighs> See, this is, like, the one flaw with this game is the switching system. I kind of wish there was a better method for the switching system instead of hitting select. Like, I feel like there could have been a way to do this. I don't know. Maybe I'm just fucking getting cranky. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, I think I'm maybe just getting cranky with this shit. <laughs> We've only done this for like 20 so minutes. I just... Uh... I don't know, it's just, it's, it's the way the game is facilitated, I'm just like, okay, why, 
why this system? Why not just say, like, okay, every character has every ability. You just pick one character to play throughout the game, and fuck me. See, that's what I was talking about. You fall from a great enough height, it'll automatically count as a death. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Get used to that, because there's a lot of dying in this. <coughs> uh, Alright, Stan. Stan, Stan, he's our man. If he can't do it, well, I'm out 20 bucks. <laughs> You're betting on children's football games, Jimbo? Hey, come on, there's got to be something I can do. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I gotta watch, uh... I gotta go back and watch, um... The first couple seasons again. Just cause. <laughs> just because, man. Like, I remember, like, my family made the entire feat of, like, agreeing with me, like, let's watch all of South Park. I was like, okay, what do you mean by all of South Park? All of South Park. Okay, you can't jump on Stan. That fucking sucks. <laughs> but we can all jump on Cartman and Kyle. <laughs> no, we watched through like every episode of South Park from like season one to season season twenty four. Season one up to the two specials, uh, the two uh, COVID specials. Not the ones on Paramount Plus. The ones on um, the ones that were put on HBO Max. The ones that aired on Comedy Central and went to HBO Max. Um, we watched those ones. And that was pretty much it. And then when I found out, oh, the post-COVID specials came out. Like, I sat down and watched the rest of it. So, I think I haven't seen the other post-COVID special yet. The return of uh, COVID. And I think the reason I haven't watched it is because, like, people already spoiled the ending for me. I was like, oh... <laughs> It's a funny ending, but I'm just like, ah, <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right, gotta get. I feel like I'm doing this wrong. God damn it! I feel like I shouldn't be using Cartman to jump up there. Hey you guys, I'm doing him. Uh, that's one thing I'm very impressed with myself. It's doing an Eric Cartman. <laughs> Like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, I could do a Carmen. Hey, you guys. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, you guys. <laughs> like, everyone's like, oh, yeah, we could do an Eric Carmen. Hey, you guys. Seriously. <clears throat> but, like, I've somehow kind of tricked my voice into almost getting perfect. So I'll be like, <clears throat> uh, hey, Ken, what's going on, Ken? Uh, yeah. Hey, Ken. Yeah. <laughs> Stan, what's going on, my man, Stan? Why is no one paying attention to me? <laughs> Am I actually dead? <laughs> Ma! Okay, see, I can't do the yell. <clears throat> see, yell, like, yelling as carbon kind of hurts my throat, but, like, I'm just doing, like, small talk, like, oh, if I'm happy I know, clap my hands. If I'm happy I know, clap my hands. Yeah, something like that. And, like, for me, like, all I have to do is, like, kind of, like, pitch, pitch my voice up and just, I gotta put, like, my tongue on the top of my mouth. So I'll be like, <clears throat> Whoa, what's up, guy? Hey, guy, what's going on? Dude. Dude, that is so sweet. <laughs> I do that from time to time. I'll just, like, do, like, a little Cartman voice. Just like, it'd be cute. <laughs> I'm Jay Cartman, and I think I'm cute. <laughs> like my cheetah poofs. <laughs> Shit, that hurts. <laughs> uh. <coughs> there are people trying to go back in time. <laughs> Hello there, I'm looking for the competitive share. <laughs> it's the other one I could do is Mackie, but um, well, I mean, come on, like everyone could do Mackie, they can go, um, can you just stop on the run, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> Kids, I need to get you all foul language. Okay. <laughs> 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 Q, 
Guys, I made a big dookie. Okay. <laughs> Kyle, that is not cool. Okay. <laughs> Uh, back to this shit again. <laughs> we died because we left the time run out because I have no idea what the fuck to do. <laughs> well, like, I have an idea of what to do. I just don't know how what order I'm supposed to be doing it in. That's the problem with a lot of these fucking levels. Is like, you know what you're doing, but like, you don't know how exactly to pull it off. Captain in the chambers. You think you're pretty cute? <laughs> think you're cute, cat? I'm scared. I'm scared to I guess I can talk about the background here. Um, fun fact, that is not actually a still from the show. <laughs> the background is not a still from the show. I actually made that. I literally made all of that. Uh, what you're seeing in the background is like the blur. Uh, still, to like essentially fit the uh, screen for a widescreen and not do like just black bars. Yeah, that's all... I like bonus round with Wendy. I kind of missed that running joke. Stan constantly uh, puking on Wendy. I kind of missed it because it was always like a funny thing for like the original run. I think the last time they did it was like season 11. And then they're like, yeah, I don't think we're doing this anymore. Okay, you get all the Mr. Hats. And time. Two seconds to spare. But anyway, back to the background. So, I, I made that. <laughs> yeah, that background uh, for the video is like, I made that. That took me, I think, like an hour and a half, hour and a half, maybe two hours to do. And uh, I'm just going to set Kurt in here. Okay, get Kyle down there. And uh, the thing was, like, the way I made it <laughs> was... um. I literally did, and I remember tweeting this out, I'm like, I literally am doing digital cutouts. That's how I'm pulling this off. As, that's how I pulled it off, was literally doing digital cutouts. It's like, I would get, like, construction paper, like, images and, like, textures, and just literally cut around it with, like, the lasso tool on Photoshop. Like, I would have, like, my reference models for Stan, Kyle, Carmen, and Kenny, and I would literally just cut around the reference models. Like, each individual part I needed, so, like, <clears throat> like, Cartman's jacket is one, one image, and then you'd have, like, his hat. You know, the blue part's one section, and then all the yellow stuff. It's like, the, the little poof on the top, of the rim, and Cartman's gloves. That's all one section. Um, you know, similarly with, like, Stan. Like, his hat, you know, the red, you know, the hat, and the hood in the back. And the gloves, that's all one. And then, you know, like, the blue for the hat, that's another layer. And then the blue for the pants are another layer. They're not mixed together. Because if they were, it wouldn't look right. You know, brown in the jacket. Like, I literally had to, like, look for the contemporary colors and go, look, we saved Kenny. And, oh my god, they killed Kenny. You bastards. <laughs> uh, and my password, which I am going to completely forget. <laughs> So we're on to level two. I'm the bus. <sighs> Chef, you gotta help. Kenny and Miss Crabtree's bus. <laughs> Damn, children grow up these fast. Grow up fast these days. Now, boys, soon all of you will discover girls, and when you want to make sweet love down by the fire, the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> make sweet love. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's not the chef's right. <laughs> I think the toughest one I had to do in terms of like going back to the cutout conversation, I think the toughest one I had was um Kenny. Like I'm not lying, I think Kenny was the toughest one I had. Like I thought it would have been like Kyle, but no, it was Kenny. Kenny was the toughest one I had to do because Kenny, like the easy thing I could have done was just made all one orange layer. But then I like looked closer at Kenny's uh, reference model sheet and I was like Shit, no, I can't do that. <laughs> like, it would be too easy, but, like, I can't do it that way. And the reason I can't is... Um... The reason I couldn't do it that way is because, um... Uh, there's little shadows underneath each section, so, like... The... Why'd I do that? So, like, the, uh... 
like um the jacket itself has one layer of section and then you like you got the hood and that goes underneath that and the pants underneath that so it, it it was like a weird process where i had to like mentally like just refocus my brain and going like okay i have to do i have to do kenny in like three parts like the only other color other than orange was brown <laughs> And that was only for the gloves. That was it. Like, if I had done, like, a side view, that would have been a different story. But I didn't. Heck, if I had done Dead Kenny, that would have been funnier. <laughs> Just had him killed by the Game Boy. Which, don't get me started on that, because that was another fucking... <laughs> uh, kettle of fish I had to fucking figure out how to, how to work out. <laughs> I was just like, okay, how am I going to make a cardboard cutout style the, uh... Fucking Game Boy. Like, on the one hand, I was like, oh, this is gonna be easy, I can do this. And then I was like, nope. Because <laughs> it's like, okay, then you gotta figure out, you know, how are you gonna, you know, set up dimension on it? Well, I can't really set up dimension on this. And I got rid of my dark gray uh, fucking textures I needed. It was getting too late, and I'm like, I'm not even in the mood to look for it again. Like, I needed it for the start and select button. I was like, okay, that's fair enough. You know, but I was like, I'm not gonna add dimension to that. <laughs> Are you mad? <laughs> um, yeah, it was like a good like two. I think the only cheat I did, other than well, not going full on like the dimension for the Game Boy, was um, <sighs> damn it, um, <coughs> lost my train of thought for a second. The only thing I kind of regret I didn't do was I didn't do myself in the cutout style similar to uh. What I had done with the four boys, and I think the reason was, was A, <laughs> it was getting late, and B, I was like, I realized how much more work that would be <laughs> to put into that just to go, yeah, so we're just going to do like a South Park style cutout of myself. <laughs> so like the easy solution, I, god damn it, the easy solution I thought there was, was to uh, go to the South Park uh, website and just make make my avatar in the avatar maker and then just literally uh, copy it, paste it in there and then just like delete out the unnecessary parts and work it that way. So I just gave that one away. <laughs> but like everything else other than that was like completely cut out. Like I don't think there was any cheat on that other than my avatar. Everything else was completely cut out and you know Photoshop uh, realistically. So it kind of looks like, in a way, a version of, um, like how they would have done, like, a setup, uh, shot for, uh, like an old, old episode of South Park. God damn it. I guess I had to restart the level again. Um, but, like, that's how I literally set it up, was, like, I set it up so, like, if you looked at it, it kind of looks like an old, old shot. <laughs> like, it looks like something that, like, if you took, like, one glance at it, you'd be like, looks like you pulled that picture from, like, 1997. <laughs> like, 96, 97. Like, that was the point I was going for, was, like, I wanted to make it look more, like, home-feeling instead of just saying, oh, it would have been easy to just grab the reference sheets and then just copy-paste, you know, trim, and just, that would have been it. But no, I wanted to go the extra mile at least. <laughs> so, I remember the idea of that just like swam in my head. I'm like, yeah, let's do it that way. That would be fun. <laughs> so. Uh. <laughs> Is there anything else I could talk about? In regards to the old SP. <laughs> Other than that, I'm still ashamed that Trevor and Matt just like sat there and thought to themselves, this isn't going to work. <laughs> Clearly it looks like it would have worked. And I think I just swapped the characters around by accident. Whoops. <laughs> I think Kyle was supposed to go up there. And then Cartman... 
I don't know why I keep thinking to myself, I could jump on Stan. I cannot jump on Stan. I can only jump on Cartman and Ken, uh, Kyle. It would be nice if there was an alternate mode where it's like, oh, you could play as Kenny. The little Kenny's power up beat. I, <laughs> I kind of. I kind of feel bad there was never a portable South Park game. There wasn't one until, uh, Fracture Bubble. <laughs> like, literally, it took that long to get a portable version of South Park. And that was only because, uh, Fracture Bubble got on, um, Switch. Like, had it not been on Switch, I would literally say there was never <laughs> a South Park, uh, <laughs> game on a portable console. Try tossing Cartman. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out how the fuck Stan lifts Cartman up. Come on, Cartman, I'm gonna lift you up. No, you can't. I'm eating cheesy poops. <laughs> ah, that hurts you, butt licker. <laughs> uh, I think I fucked this up again. Just let the time run out and kill me. <laughs> uh. Alright, so what I think I have to do first, I have to get. Stan over to, uh, where Cartman's at, at least. <coughs> See, I'm saying this out loud, and I'm realizing I'm not doing anything of that nature. <laughs> uh, because I don't listen to myself. <laughs> Who would want to listen to me? Uh, you know, like, I fucking, I pre-recorded this gameplay footage, because, you know, I'm doing emulated games, I mean, might as well. Trust me, there's going to be a lot more coming up down the road. <laughs> I will admit this is a lot shorter of an episode than I expected, but I just got that frustrated over the, uh, over the other set of God damn it, that doesn't work. God damn it, you're a fat-ass Cartman. Shut up, Stan. <laughs> you're being totally immature. <sighs> uh, I'm trying to think of my favorite episode from season one. It's like one of the favorite, like, old episodes. Um, I think Tom's Rhinoplasty was my favorite one from at least the first season. Season two, I didn't watch season two. Uh, mainly because... I don't think I had that season before I got the Blu-ray set. Before I got the, uh... Come on, toss... There we go. <laughs> I need Kyle to come back down so I could toss... <sighs> oh, damn it. <laughs> I'm never gonna learn anything from this. <laughs> uh... Now, I don't think I watched Season 2... I didn't get watch Season 2 till the, uh... Until I got the Blu-ray set. And the only reason I bought the Blu-ray set, I remember, was because those had the remastered episodes. Yeah, I'm trying to remember when exactly. I think it was 09? Oh, either 2009 or 2010. Um, South Park Studios put out the announcement, like, you know, we're upscaling all the episodes to HD. They're going to be, you know, digitally remastered. You know, for... For better uh, sound and you know clearer visuals. <coughs> and essentially, what they like didn't mention anyone was um. Ah, eh, restart again. Clearly, what they didn't mention to anyone was um. What we mean by this is, you're gonna see uh, we're gonna go back and redo the episodes. So they literally because they were able to because South Park is a digital show on all their assets are digital, they were able to literally go back into all the old, uh, into all the old files from the first, like, 11 years, and literally go back and remake every episode. So, every episode got remade, uh, into HD. I think they're one of the few shows that was able to do that. Because, because I think it's in terms of animation, I think South Park and I think Mucha Lucha are the only two that can do uh, 
that like were possible to do in 16 by 9 because they kept all the original assets. <clears throat> I think I remember reading somewhere like Mucha Lucha was able to do the same thing. People don't know that's a that was a uh, uh, Warner Brothers uh, animated show for Saturday morning. That was a kid show on Kids WB. Um, but they were able to do the same thing where they were able to go in and do um, do um, HD remaster similar to like South Park. Where all they literally had to do was go back, re-render the episodes in 16x9. Mm-hmm. South Park, not only did they have to re-render the episodes, they had to actually add more shit in and go back and actually fix uh, fix bugs. Well, not like bugs, but like... um go back in and fix um, certain elements that they weren't able to fix back in uh, back in the 90s, back in the original uh, eras. So stuff like um, someone did a good video uh, video um, comparison where they were like this is the original broadcast version or uh, this was the original way it was broadcast back in like this day, you know, 1998 you know, and here's Here's the 2009 remasters, and... Okay, so the switch is up there, so we gotta get Stan up there. So it's like, this is, you know, the original, you know, 98 broadcast, and then, like, here's the 2009, uh, you know, HD, uh, update. You know, it's like, and notice how, like, this character is now able to speak, you know, more clearly, you know, off-screen. You know, because in the original episode, you wouldn't have heard, you know, you wouldn't have seen them talk, or you would have barely seen anything, you know, because of the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Now, you know, because of 16 by 9 they had to literally go back in and add more fucking mouth cues for off-screen dialogue. <laughs> so, like, um, it's like stuff, I'm trying to think of one good episode that would have had that thing in it. Okay, there's a rat, I'm gonna need Cartman, because I can't jump over this fucking rat. Unless... Yep, nope. I need Carmen. <laughs> I need Carmen so I can toss him. Um, I'm trying to think of a good episode that's, uh, that's a good example of that. Where they literally were able to like add more um, mouth charts in, or mouth movements. I, I, I think episode 2 might have been... Weight Gain 4000 I think might have been the one I'm thinking of. Where, like, they were able to go back in and add more, um, add more lip sync into it. Because <coughs> they weren't able to originally because of, um... <clears throat> Can you get Cartman up there? Perfect. And I'm gonna get Stan. Shit. Um, for that, they weren't able to originally because of, uh, again, 4 by 3 so, because now all the episodes are rendered in 16 by 9 <laughs> you know, there's no point into, uh, into cheating it where you don't have to... I don't know how I got into this discussion, but <laughs> it's a fascinating discussion. I recommend... you got to find, like, a comparison video. Okay, come on. God damn it. Because um, someone did a comparison, like, oh, here's the original version, and then here's the HD remasters, where they went back and fixed everything, and... Like I said, I, I think South Park and Bucha Lucha are the only two shows that successfully pulled off an HD remaster. I think in terms of, like, live action, I think... <coughs> I think Firefly may have been the only one. And Great, this is the... This is going to be a great level. How the fuck do I pull this one off? There's a fucking rat there. I can't do anything. Maybe use Kyle? You know, how do I get Cartman over? Red Rover, Red Rover, send Cartman on over. <laughs> yes, I'm on the way, you fish. <laughs> what do you think I am? Fish. <laughs> fish ball. Yeah. Uh, and I watched a fucking walkthrough on this like four times and I still fuck this up. <laughs> Okay, guys, I'm gonna hurt. That hurt you, but like, I'm... Yeah, I think Firefly might have been the only live-action show pre-2009. 
2009 that was able to go back and no, no, I think no. If I I think George Lopez also had 16 by 9 episodes. Again, this is a weird subject we got into. <laughs> the debate of 16 by 9 episodes. Um, I feel like I'm doing this wrong. Uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I think it was. I think it was only Firefly and Lopez because I don't think there was any other. I might think of some, some like after the video, and I'll probably bring them up in the next episode or something. I don't know. But there's Miss Crabtree. <laughs> you want an office referral? No. Let's sit down. Uh. <clears throat> Try to think of a list of characters they've killed off over the 25 years. Crabtree's been killed off. Um, Pip's been killed off. Actually, I, I felt like that kind of sucked, because, like, Pip was one of the few, like, early season, like, good characters. Damien. God damn it, game over. Um, I don't think Damien was killed off, though. Alright, well, sure, I put in the password here, so I think it's C H T B K S. I don't know why I thought of Chicken Bites, but that was funny. Yeah, I think Crabtree and Pip. I think are the only... No. Yeah, no. I'm trying to think if there was another character that passed away off-screen. Either on-screen or off-screen. I'm trying to think. I know Hanky was driven out of town in, like, season 24. Or not 24, uh, 22. And the, uh, the problem with Apu... Did it... Shh! <laughs> Good joke, Matt. Good joke. Good joke, Trey and Matt. Good joke. GG. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think. I don't think there was any other characters. I think it was only Crabtree and fucking Pit that were the ones that were killed off. I can't think of any other like reoccurring character that died. Yeah, I can't really think of any. You know, I've been watching South Park for like 20 years, and I can't think of the fucking other characters that have been killed off. Um, God damn it. <laughs> thought that would have had enough, like, fucking span to smack them. Um, yeah, I think that was it. I think it was only Crabtree and Pip. I think those are the only two that have been killed off. Or, no, 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 wait. I just realized Chokes on Dick has been killed off. Uh, the boy's uh, fourth grade teacher, the original fourth grade teacher, from uh, seasons four to like six, she got killed off. I just realized that, and it's funny because that was in my favorite episode. <laughs> this in the fucking Simpsons did it episode. She uh, she passed away. She dies in that episode. And I remember there's a fucking sea where Cartman goes swimming in her in her corpse looking for fucking sea monkeys. <laughs> I remember that. I was trying to like sit here and think, so I'm like, I feel like I remember there was one other character that passed away in the show, and I was trying to remember who the fuck it was. And then just like fucking Donovan, wait, 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 no, Chunks on Dick passed away. She passed away in season six. <laughs> she, uh, I'm trying to remember how they, how they wrote her death. I think they wrote it that she died via, uh, Mackie, <laughs> which I remember hearing about. When I saw that scene, I was like, oh my god, really? It was Mackie that killed her? <laughs> I killed Miss Jones on Nick. Okay. She's being a bitch. Okay. Uh, Alright, now we just play the waiting game. Alright, I was just over there. Yep. Yeah, but I think those are the only three characters that have been killed off in the, in the show's like 25 years. Well, I mean, also, technically, Kenny's been killed off, but, you know, A, that's a recurring joke, and B, the one time they tried to take it seriously and, like, do it, Trey and Matt were like, yeah, we immediately regretted that decision. <laughs> like, the only good thing it did was, like, it gave us a story arc for season six, but, like, other than that, like, we were just sitting there going, okay, we killed off Kenny, we killed off, like, the best running joke we had. The only reason we killed it off was we were getting sick of the running joke. <laughs> Like, that's, 
That's legitimately the only reason they killed off Kenny was because they were just getting sick of figuring out ways to kill Kenny. And I think I remember hearing in the commentary they were originally saying like they wanted Kyle to die because they thought like Stan and Kyle were too like similar. So they were like, wouldn't it be weird if we just had Kyle pass away? <laughs> And then they turned their, you know, like, they immediately rejected that idea and said, no, 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 what if we did Kenny? Because Kenny's already become a pain in the ass to write for. Like, how do we keep killing this guy off after five seasons? <laughs> it's like, well, let's just kill him off for good. <laughs> and, like, that, that fucking worked, and that, you know, all, the plot of season six completely is the boys trying to find someone to replace Kenny. That's, like, the entire plot of season six up to the ending. And it's funny because the, it's the earliest time they did a story arc, and humorously enough, they did it well. I don't think they would touch a story arc again until season 18. But, damn it, nope. Get off Kyle. There we go. Anyway, what was I going to say? I was like, that was the earliest time they did a story arc was season 6. Like, before that, like, they would do, like, two-parters, three-part episodes, but, like, never, like, a whole season-long arc. Where it was like, oh, yeah, this is our entire... God damn it. <laughs> where it was like, oh, yeah, this is our entire plot for the entire season. It's going to be, uh, we killed off Kenny, and now the boys need to find someone to replace Kenny. <laughs> like, that was the entire story arc of season six. And they literally, they split it up into, like, three acts. So it'd be, like, story arc, act one... Um, you know, episodes one to, uh, I think, six of the uh, season. Butters is the third kid. Or, not the third kid, the fourth kid. So it'd be Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Butters. And they did that up to uh, Professor Chaos. And then the second act, part two of the story arc, was Butters gets replaced by Tweak. And that goes from episode... Seven. That goes from Simpsons Did It all the way to uh, Ladder to Heaven. So, I think that, that wasn't that many episodes. I think that was only like... I'm trying to think here. Simpsons Did It. Uh, free Hat. Uh, I'm trying to remember the episodes off the top of my head, and I cannot. <laughs> that is sad. I'm like trying to sit here and think like... What the fuck are the list of the episodes? I might actually have to look this one up. Hold on. Okay, I got all the bonuses. Great. Give me one second here. I might actually have to look this one up. So I'm trying to remember how many episodes they had tweaked it. I thought it was four. Cool. Pull up my episode uh, season thing here. I'd usually pull up my episode guide, but I don't think I have it pulled out yet. So, Because I have uh, the episode guides for this. Alright, that was the episode I was forgetting. Red Hot Half with Love. I was like trying to remember, like, what the fuck was the other episode? Yeah, so that was like episodes like 7 to 11. The episode 7 to uh, 11 of the season. Or with Tweak. Because, like, he got his own spotlight episode, which I think was, um, was uh, Child Abduction is Not Funny. <laughs> Damn it. Um, <clears throat> like, that was his spotlight episode for the season. And then, um,. Yeah, start, and then with Letter to Heaven, that's when we get in the third act of the arc, which is when, uh, shit, which is when, um, they change up the story and just decide, I'm on throw it, Damien, there we go, when they just decide, fuck it, <laughs> let's bring back Kenny, but let's do it in a smart way, I think that that's how they put it in the commentary, they're like, let's bring back Kenny, but let's do it in a cool way, and the cool way they were discussing was... Let's have Cartman drink Kenny. <laughs> God damn it, I was right... I guess I was right in front of Kyle. That didn't count, I guess. Um, yeah, let's bring back Kenny in a cool way. Let's have Cartman drink Kenny. <laughs> and that just... That becomes the, the Act 3 arc. Is... Ah, shit. <laughs> so, like, the Act 3 arc from, like, episode 12 to... Uh, I think episode 16... Yeah, episodes like 12 to 16, or not 16, maybe 15, I think it's 12 to 15, because so I think it was only four episodes they did it, so from like episodes like 12 to 15 or so, um, 
Kenny is Kenny's soul is trapped in Cartman's body, <laughs> and that's and that's like the last arc of the, the season. Is we went from Butters became the fourth kid to Tweak became the fourth kid to Cartman just drank Kenny, and so fuck it. Technically, there are four kids now. God fuck. Damn it, Kyle, you and your bouncy hat. <laughs> it's like that became the entire, like, season-long arc, split into three acts. The Butters arc, uh, section of the arc, like the beginning, and then you would have the Tweak section of the arc. God damn it, Carmen, don't eat your cheesy poofs. Um, the Tweak section, and then you would just have Cartman as Kenny. So... I love deep diving into that one. Like, if I, was, if I had ever, like, brought back many reviews, that would have been one of my episodes. Would have been, uh, why season six is my favorite season of South Park, because it's so perfectly produced. Uh, Shram had perfectly formulated a story arc before, like, they had actually considered doing story arcs. So I don't think they started doing story arcs till like season eighteen, and I think they even said like we weren't aware it was going to be a complete story arc until we were like every episode was focused on technology, like we weren't anticipating that to be a story arc, but it became a story arc, <laughs> and like you know, there's a definition. Ah, we got him. There's a definition of like what technically is considered a story arc. Like, if it's something where we're, like, we're referencing, you know, moments from older episodes, you can say, okay, those are callbacks. But if it's something where, like, a certain element from one episode is starting to play into other episodes, then, yeah, you're kind of building a story arc. <laughs> and then again, that also brings me to my least favorite season, which is season 20, which everyone honestly agrees season 20 was the worst season of South Park. And that was only because, um... And that was only because, like, Trey and Matt had a plan for the season, but, you know, real life kind of, um, affected all that. <laughs> real life kind of affected the events of what would become the, um... Why am I... Why am I doing this? <laughs> like, real life, like, affected the outcome of events, because they, they had originally had a whole different plan for season 20, and then something happened. I don't want to name what it was. Uh, you piece that together because season 20 came out in 2016. Something happened. That's all I'm going to put it as. Something. And, um... <laughs> and so, uh... Come on. <sighs> Shit. Alright, let's just see if I can restart this level. Yeah, there we go. And so, um, because of that, <laughs> um, because of the certain something happening, Trey and Matt had to literally go last minute and go, oh fuck, now we need to fix our story arc, because we weren't expecting this outcome. <laughs> Again, you piece together the pieces for what the outcome was, uh, for what the unexpected outcome was, because I ain't gonna say it out loud. <laughs> uh. Shit, come on, get up there. Come on, stand. There we go. Okay, and now we gotta get Cartman up there. <coughs> come on, Kevin, let me up here. I just want my cheesy beefs. <laughs> my beefcake! <laughs> I, I guess another thing I can phrase for this uh, prototype is uh, the audio clips. <sighs> Great fucking audio clips. <laughs> Again, remember Trey and Matt say they don't have any involve, involvement in those old games because they didn't like them. <laughs> yeah, they did. They had all their audio tracks from the show in, in these games. But then again, Acclaim could have also just went to Comedy Central and said, um, Yeah, hey, do you have uh, audio tracks of uh, the boys, you know, saying, you know, saying stuff that we could use for these games and... And Comedy Central's like, yeah, sure. <laughs> you know, just, here's the address of the studio, just go in, the associate producer will be in there, and you just tell them, uh, you need these for the game. 
Yeah, we didn't sign a lucrative deal for nothing. <laughs> ah, fuck. <laughs> I think the weird thing too is like this along with the um along with the uh, N64 and like PlayStation games, like they all came out relatively around the time like season one Season 1 had ended, I think, and like Season 2 it was just about to start. So like that's how quick these games were turned out, like, by the time they came out, like, Season 1 had like nearly wrapped. <laughs> Carbon, why are you- never mind. <laughs> You're so confused, like, you can look at the bottom thing and just go like, oh yeah, that's where, you know, that's who I'm playing as, that's Kyle. You know, that's, you know. <coughs> that's Stan. <laughs> that's Cartman. Beefcake! <laughs> but, but yeah, that's how quick these games came out. Like, season one, I think at that point, like, literally just ended. <laughs> and, like, season two was just about to start, and they were like, oh yeah, we got games coming out for Holiday 98. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Like, we haven't even, like, finished Season 2. <laughs> I mean, then again, I guess, like, The Simpsons was the same way. Like, the first set of Simpsons games came out, like, right after Season 1 had ended. <laughs> but, I don't know. I don't know what my point of this discussion was. I was just, I, I guess I just find it odd. <laughs> I also find it odd that Kyle had become, like, the catalyst for, like, everyone else being able to move. <laughs> Alright, let's see if we can just reset. <sighs> or something. I think... Eh, no. You know what? Yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can, uh... Reset. Oh, shit, I reset the entire game. You see, the reason I did that <laughs> was because, um... One of the emulators, when I tried it, um... i just try to put in the password here. Uh, when I tried to put it through one of the uh, emulators... Uh, every time I would hit that button, it would just immediately send me to the next level. What do you mean that's incorrect? I, I feel like I have that right. See? Come on, that's gotta be right. What could it be? C, T, is it P? H, B, M? I don't know. See, I told you I was gonna forget it. <laughs> well, I guess we have to do this again. Oh, I son of a bitch. <laughs> I had this weird dream last night. <coughs> I dreamt I was tied up in this field and there was all these cows and aliens and I was taken up in the ship and Scott Bale gave me pink eye. Carmen, that wasn't a dream, that was real. Ah, why don't I have pink eye again? Uh, then. Carmen, you do have pink eye. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> uh. You know, now that I think about it, no, I think hands down my favorite episode of season one is the pilot. <laughs> Just because it's so perfectly made. <laughs> it's got like the right fucking balance of jokes and just what the fuck moments where you're just like, what? <laughs> that kind of looks like Tom Selleck. <laughs> Beef cake. <laughs> mm. just, just start to answer anyone's questions, um... Uh, in terms of, like, the HD remasters, uh, the pilot is the only episode that's left in 4x3. And the only reason it's left in 4x3 is because, um, the crew admitted, like, we can't go back and fix this one. <laughs> there's no 16, there's no widescreen, like, versions of the original cutouts. Like, it would be impossible to go back and, like, immediately go, oh yeah, we're gonna fix all that. <laughs> Like, you know, it would have been easier just for us to, like, literally go back and, you know, remake the entire episode and, you know, the new format, but that would also take away from the authenticity of the pilot. <laughs> and, again, you know, give them kudos that they cared about the authenticity of the pilot. <laughs> you know, cared about it enough to go back and, you know, say, like, we're not going to fix it. Like, we can't. Like, the most we can do is we can upscale it, you know. You know, we can present it in a cleaner, like, crisper filter, but, like, we can't... We can't go back and, like, put it in 16 by 9. That's fucking impossible. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. 
<laughs> I don't know why I get into these conversations, but I just do. I think it's I just want this whole episode to just be centered on South Park. Just like any topic of South Park, I could just cover. <laughs> and I, I think I have most of the uh, the original release uh, games from like '98. Yeah, because I think I have uh, the original South Park um, N64 game. I have South Park Rally. That'll be a fun episode when we get to that one. Um, and then I got uh, Chef's Love Shack, which I think Love Shack was the last one I had to get uh, as part of the collection, because I think at that point I had already had uh, the OG one in Rally. I think I've had the OG one now for... God, maybe 10 years at this point I've had the OG South Park. But I know I've, I've had Rally. I think Rally was one of the last... No, I don't think it was one of the last games I bought in Michigan, but... I'm trying to remember, actually. I don't remember if it was in Michigan or if it was in New York. I know fucking Chef's Love Shack was in New York, because I got that from Pastime. Um, I'm trying to remember if fucking Rally was a Michigan or a New York. I think it was in Michigan. I think I remember getting that up. Maybe chaotic or something. Yeah, nine seconds left. Like this is the best the emulation can give us. I'm sorry. <laughs> like again, if like you're if you're like hearing the audio not synced up or if you're seeing the video kind of glitching out a bit, like that's the best we can get in terms of video quality. Like I, I tried to go with like the best emulator I could find. So, and, you know, if you want to see more footage of this, um, <clears throat> I recommend, um, what the heck is the name of the channel? Um, well, I mean, you can always just type in South Park Game Boy Color Pipe, uh, prototype or something. I'm trying to remember the name of the game, uh, gaming channel that I came across that I was using for the walkthrough. To, like, go through everything to make sure I had everything correct. Um... I cannot remember it off the top of my head. <coughs> Fuck. Um, shit, actually. If I can quickly look that up while I'm waiting here. Let me, uh, let me take a quick look. I just want to remember what the fuck the name of it was. Uh... Safety Clink, that was the name of the channel. So yeah, go to uh, Safety Clink if you want to see, uh, <coughs> if you want to see, like, the full gameplay. Because like I said, this is, like, overall eight levels. And we keep fucking this up, so. <coughs> Trust me, I wanted to get through the rest of this, but, like, like, we just couldn't. I just literally could not. <laughs> like, the Crabtree level just kind of, I don't know, mentally screwed me over. I was like, oh, I got this. I was like, no, I don't. And I almost killed myself there. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to climb this up. And then it was like, wait, Damien's pattern. Oh. <laughs> Beefcake. <laughs> shit, shit. There we go. Haha. <laughs> I will say for a prototype, this is not, not bad. I mean, this was like 70% complete. So... I think I just need a few more touch-ups. I think I remember, like, even as I was playing this, there was some, like, messages popping in. I don't know if they... I don't think they appeared on this, uh, the recording, but... I remember that just seeing them when I was playing through this. I was like, what the fuck is that messaging? I was actually going to freeze frame and just go, the fuck? I think it was, like, quality assurance for, like, a claim, like... Hey, uh... You know, if this, you know, if there's something wrong with this portion of the game, please call us a quality assurance, you know? For, like, the test, you know, the play testers. <laughs> CBTHPM. Ah, so I got the T and the B mixed up. I'm stupid. <laughs> oh my God. Jeff, you gotta help us. <laughs> Kenny got himself logged up a tree. Oh boy, children. <laughs> Oh, that's something I could actually talk about now. Um, something interesting I came across. I was actually debating on, like, if I wanted to cover this on a episode or not. Like, not this episode. I was, th I was thinking about, like, a different episode to cover it on. Um, for, like, a different game. 
But, um, so, one of the big things about South Park, um, obviously was the character of Chef. Uh, Chef, the boy's, uh, mentor. Um, for, like, the first, like, nine seasons of the show. And, um, of course, as hopefully everyone knows, if not, uh, spoilers, uh, Chef, who I just now realize is also one of the characters that passed away. Whoops. <laughs> Um, yeah, Chef dies in, uh, the season 10 premiere. I just remember that. I'm like, doesn't there someone else who died? Oh, yeah. Chef. Chef passes away in season 10. Um, he gets killed off. And the reason they killed him off, though, is, uh, what's interesting. So, the story that many people know, uh, hopefully, is, um, that, um, Isaac Hayes was a, uh, was a practicer of Scientology. Uh, he was in, you know, the Scientologists uh, community at the time, and I guess he got a little fed up. Well, this is the story that people know. Uh, I guess he got fed up with Trey and Matt making fun of Scientology in the episode Trap in the Closet. This was a season nine episode, uh, by the way. And so, uh, nice. Um, and so what happened was after season nine had wrapped, uh, I guess Hayes wrote a letter to Trey and Matt and said, um, I wholly disagree with, you know, your guys's uh, notions of making fun of, you know, religion and, um, you know, I'm, I'm leaving the show. I'm quitting the show. And Trey and Matt were kind of shocked, but at the same time they were also kind of angry. <laughs> Well, like, I guess not, like, full-scale angry, but they were, like, just kind of, like, what's the word I'm looking for? They were, like, not, like, fully, like, like, oh, my God, Isaac, why would you? But more in the, uh, sense of, um, they were more, like, all right, fine, I mean, if you want to go, if you want to, you know, take, you know, Scientology's side instead of our side, you know, be our guest. <laughs> so, they were, like, Here's what we're going to do in retaliation. We're going to kill your character off. <laughs> That's what they did. The season 10 premiere, aptly titled The Return of Chef. They literally went and they were just like, Alright, we're going to kill off Chef. <laughs> and that was it. They killed off Chef in the season 10 premiere. They made him Darth Chef. and uh, They brought in the guy who played Darth Mole to <laughs> fucking come in and do the voice of him, and that was it. And we never saw Chef again. Like, Chef never reappeared. I think the most he reappeared in was, I think, Stick of Truth. And they just, they went back and they just reused old audio clips from, uh... God damn it, I went to the wrong end with Stan. Um, they went back and reused old audio clips from, uh, Isaac Hayes from, like, the first nine years. Similar to what they did, actually, in the season 10 premiere. They went back and reused old audio clips. But, that's that's the story that everyone knows. The real story, though, <laughs> about what happened with Isaac. Um, this this came from his son, Isaac Hayes III. Um, was actually that uh, he didn't want to leave the show. Isaac never wanted to leave South Park. This is, again, this is the story that Isaac Hayes' uh, son uh, had uh, stated in more recent uh, interviews. Was that Isaac was not, he was not mad at the show. He was was a little peep, but he wasn't, like, mad. He wanted to keep doing the show. But what happened was, he had suffered a stroke uh, in uh, January, like a month or so after the season had wrapped. And, you know, it was kind of a debilitating stroke, and, you know, they weren't sure he was going to you know, have his voice or anything, so he had, uh, he had been considering maybe just retiring the role. Like, not retiring it for religious reasons, retiring it more for health reasons. That was the, uh, that was the actual reason for him leaving. God damn it, I cannot get Cartman across that goddamn... <sighs> shit. <laughs> anyway. So, so that was the whole story. So it was more of a health thing. But what happened was, Isaac... Uh, Isaac had the stroke in, uh, January. And then he wrote the letter to Trey and Matt, you know, essentially saying, I quit. And that was in March, and I think the season was set to kick off like a week or two after that. And, um, as Isaac's, uh, again, some put it, uh, 
um, Isaac didn't, you know, facilitate, you know, the the writing of the letter. Essentially, what I'm, I guess I'm saying is, Isaac, you know, didn't want the letter written. Like, he had no, you know, he didn't, you know, want to write, you know, the letter to Trey Matt, or at least not write it in that way where it was them, um, where it was, um, uh, them, you know, where it was uh, them using Scientology as a joke for, you know, being the reason that he left, where in reality it was health reasons. Um, God damn it. I, I'm trying to, like, explain this in, like, the most coherent way I could. <laughs> it's hard for me to explain it, because, like, I'm trying not to, like, put words in people's mouths. But, from what I read, again, this is from what I've read uh, from, like, interviews with his son. Yeah. Isaac Hayes did not want to leave South Park because of Scientology. He was actually going to leave because of health. Because he was not in the best of shape. And remember, like, Isaac Hayes passed away, like, two years after all this shit went down. And, um... <laughs> yeah, so he didn't want to leave for that reason. He was going to leave for health reasons. And then, um... The, uh... The folks over at the Church of Scientology decided, you know what? <laughs> you know, you're you're not in the best of health, Isaac. We're gonna we're gonna write the letter for you. And that's that's how they, they got uh Trey Mac got the letter they got. It was supposed to be for health reasons, it ended up becoming more of a religious reason instead of health. And uh I did not think this through. I need Cartman over there, so Kyle will go back. Um and so that's, like, the whole story. Like, he wasn't going to leave because of Scientology. He was going to leave because he wasn't in the best of health. As much as I can explain that several times. <laughs> but it was a fascinating story to read that. I was like, oh, well, that makes more sense. Because, <laughs> like, even Cherry Mad brought it up, like, yeah, I mean, if it was an issue of religion, like, he would have left, like, minute one <laughs> of the show. <laughs> but he didn't, like... It's kind of weird. <laughs> so, so it was like the Church of Scientology that wrote the letter on his behalf, and I'm using air quotes, so imagine air quotes, on his behalf uh, to to essentially leave. Like, again, he wanted to leave for health reasons. They wanted to use Scientology as the excuse in the hopes of pulling another episode. Or uh, in the hopes of having the guys, you know, pull an episode or something. Which... Thankfully, did not happen. Because <laughs> I think they, they only pulled the episode once, and I think the reason they pulled it was because of um, Tom Cruise. Because Tom Cruise had found out about the episode, and he had uh, he had gotten angry about it and threatened Viacom with like, "I will leave. You know, I will leave the set of Mission Impossible Three if this episode gets reran." Like that's how pissed off I am. <laughs> And Comedy Central was like, fine, yeah, sure, we'll pull the episode. <laughs> and the rerun got pulled. <laughs> That's all I can say on that. God damn it. <laughs> I didn't... Alright, fine, I guess we're just gonna have Kyle. <laughs> Kick ass, dude. Uh, look at that fascinating story, though. It is really fucking fascinating. Uh, I'm sorry, I kind of like ran out of South Park. I'm like sitting here thinking, like, is there any other South Park things I could talk about? Can we talk about the PewDiePie episodes? Maybe. <laughs> but then again, I feel like that's just kind of weird, like. If you're gonna get PewDiePie, why not just like go for Markiplier as well? I mean, I know like the reason why they went for PewDiePie is because PewDiePie reviewed Stick of Truth, and they, you know, they thought it was pretty cool. And they actually, as they like later admitted, like we used his review of the Stick of Truth to literally like fix all of the issues with um fix all of the issues that we were gonna have on a uh, fractured butthole. Like the reason fractured butthole is the way it is because of PewDiePie. Shit. <laughs> oh, my stomach is acting up. 
I just realized, update on the plush. The plush still hasn't come in yet. My uh, peach plush from my uh, friend Toddy still hasn't come in yet. Um, I was hoping it would have came in this week, but it hasn't come in yet. Uh, hopefully it comes in soon. Uh, I'm already like looking at like pushing the uh, next episode of game Rama if I don't get my hands on it as soon as possible because I kind of need it for that prop. It's like the one joke that I can't like literally do. Like I could film everything else but that one joke. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think if there's any others interesting. I mean, you know, the, you know, talk about you know, you know, sing praises of Mary Kay Bergman and you know the original voice of like all the female characters in self son of a bitch in uh, South Park up to like. From like 97 to 99, up from like 97 up to her death, up to her uh, suicide. But yeah, and, like that's the reason, like Mr. Hankey's Christmas Classics, um, uh, that season three uh, holiday episode became an episode. <laughs> it was just supposed to be a CD, and then uh, you know, Terry Mac got the news about Mary Kay's death, and they were like, well. We can't do anything with any female characters for at least another month, month and a half. You know, at least until we come back for season four. So, we got to think of ideas. And <laughs> they were like, well, you know, we recorded the CD for the holidays. Why not make an episode based on the CD? Just take every track from the CD and make it a skit within the episode. So, it's like one of the few, like, anthology episodes, you know, made mainly because of that fact. It's a good episode. It's one of my favorite holiday episodes. But. Now, I know that I came from a place of tragedy. <laughs> yeah, I have here. <laughs> Just to kind of uh, give myself something to eat and also to hopefully let my uh, throat rest for a minute. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> it's always that fucking rat! <laughs> rats! Why does it have to be rats? Oh, I know why. Canny. <laughs> wonder if I could inch Kyle to the edge. Oh, yeah, I could. Now just see if we can get Cartman. Yeah, there we go. We inch Kyle to the edge and we just made Cartman jump. <laughs> I was one step away from figuring this out and I never did. <laughs> the beauty of this episode is I never figure out how to finish this correctly. <laughs> oh. And, um, I guess to finish up the Mary Kay thing. I think, um, I think I remember, like, after her death, like, I think the show's had so far, like, three voice actresses come in to replace all the roles that she had done for the show. Like, it took three actresses to replace one actress <laughs> for a show. And, like, it... Technically, the reason it was three is because one left, like, I think around season seven. And so they had to find... Really enough, though, like, one of those actresses that came in to, like, fill roles was uh, Mona Marshall. Who uh, I... I, you know, recognize in terms of voices from, um, Doraemon. She's the voice of, uh, she's the English dub voice of Doraemon. So, I thought that was fascinating. I'm like, Really? Oh, come on, me. I was almost there. I just... <laughs> I just needed to move Kyle over, and I would have had standing Carmen right where I needed them. But no, I said. <laughs> I'm not that smart. Yeah, I thought that was, like, the weirdest one. I was like, I want a Marshall, you know, like, doing voices on South Park, and then it's like, you hear her in Doraemon, you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, this is this is supposed to be fucking Sheila Broflowski. <laughs> I think that's the only voice she does. I don't think she does any other voices. I think it's only I think she's only in for characters like Sheila. <laughs> this was a weird diverging turn I took for this fucking episode. We went from ha ha happy go lucky. We're talking about South Park, and I think I'm gonna call it here uh, to just death. This is Tony. I'm signing out. See you guys next time. Take care, everybody.